Hello right bags, it's Jade, welcome to a new world beginner's guide for someone that's just got to level 12, nearly there at level 13, 10 hours into the game, I thought I'd give you the benefit of what I kind of wish I knew a bit earlier. This isn't a super detailed in-depth guide, this is the beta, the full game's going to be coming out, there may be changes, so take this video for what it was really just designed to give some really captain obvious kind of guides i know some of this stuff you probably have known or worked out but as an mmo always there's stuff going on and it kind of throws it at you in the first few hours if you're not used to playing these types of games like me i'm a bit rusty last one i played was eso about three years ago then you may find it a bit overwhelming so hopefully i'm just going to be reminding you some stuff and hopefully giving you a few little pointers just to make it a little bit easier going through the first few stages when the full game comes out, that's when I really will dive into a bit more slicker, a little bit more to the point in everything I'm doing in terms of guides. But this is just a general all-round tips as I discovered them to do with XP, crafting, storage and exploration. If you want to join the company, do come and join my Discord. We've got a new world channel. Just say hello in there and you'll see the details, how you can join, what server we're on and what faction we are with. Anywho, let's go. When you find the inventory boxes in settlements, go ahead and dump all your stuff off. You'll be surprised how quickly you can get caught out, over encumbered and then have to worry about dropping items. One note of caution when using the inventory box, obviously if you've got friends and they happen to be some way across halfway around the world, don't forget to empty your inventory box before you go to meet up with them. Again it's pretty obvious but the storage location up here, you'll see that I'm in Everfall. But if I go to the rest of the shores, ta -da, I've got nothing. This isn't Minecraft, they're not ender boxes. So if you are planning on migrating to another town to meet up with friends or whatever, make sure you take all your stuff with you. If you're a bit concerned about actually shifting all of your hard foraged gear, well there is a way that you can also carry a bunch of this stuff to a new location. You're gonna need a bag. If you go to the outfit station, you should be able to craft some rugged bags. Some of these materials you might have to spend a bit of time crafting or getting hold of. In particular, the rune of holding might be a bit difficult to get hold of. But normally you get that by completing quests for your faction. This is how you can carry more of your stuff, even when you're not just moving from settlement to settlement, but just out in the general world. Obviously, some of this stuff you are going to need if you're going into battle, so make sure you've got your favourite weapons, some rations, and some potions if you made some. But something else I didn't realise for a while was that you can go ahead and craft and make stuff even without the items in your inventory. When you're in a settlement, it takes directly from your box. So don't lug everything around. Your storage shed can hold a thousand weight, so that seems quite a lot, but it looks likely you're gonna be able to buy some upgrades for that with real cash in the future. But you see, I've got a bunch of stuff in here and it's holding it relatively well. Sometimes it's honestly like I'm teaching a four-year-old how to game, but you'd be surprised how many items you might miss and things you might take for granted as simple but with so much going on with all sorts of buttons, pop-ups and players, it's easy to forget. And the biggest one for me is opening up your rewards. You normally get one of these for completing one of the main quests, or even some of the side quests. So just make sure you actually go ahead and open up your loot. If there's something you're definitely not going to use, absolutely don't forget also to go ahead and dismantle it. If you've been wondering how to repair your weapons, you'll see there's a little white bar underneath them all. A right click will show you that you can repair and here is where your repair parts are. You can only repair items by using repair parts that you've got from breaking down weapons and tools. So I've got my bow so I can go ahead and press S and salvage it just like that. You'll sometimes get some resources or you may only just get repair parts, it depends on the item. Make life easier on yourself, every now and then go ahead and just press repair all as soon as it pops up once you've dismantled a bunch of items. If you're really lucky, you might even get a little bit of gold back for some of this stuff too. We'll just click repair all and it's going to repair everything for the cost of 11 19 coins and 11 repair parts. Same thing goes for everything really, make sure you've equipped. I spent about 10 minutes before I realised I hadn't actually had all my tools equipped. Sickle, knife and pickaxe. And while we're talking about them, make sure you upgrade as soon as possible. In your settlement, obviously you've got the workbenches that you're gonna to need to go through the process of either getting the raw materials into refined. And so for that, you're probably gonna need iron. You'll get to the point where you can start mining the iron. And once you've done that, well, then you can start making all sorts of things. Brand new weapons, arrows, but more important than any of that is absolutely upgrading your survival tools. Take a look at the flint pickaxe. 
100 damage, 100 gear score, gather speed 100%. The most basic of items. Now look at the iron pick. 200 damage, 205 gear score. We're increasing the gather speed by 25 to nearly 30%. So already, if you just made a brand new pickaxe with the materials, you're going to get much better results in gathering stuff. Quicker, easier and faster. Again, pretty simple, but again, something I didn't mess around with for a while. So basically, don't let your resources build up so much so that you're ignoring to craft stuff that's going to help you improve and gather certain things quicker. One other thing also, please do make sure you add some special perks. As you progress through the game, getting quests, you'll get these craft mod rewards. This Steel Ice Gauntlet charm is going to give me 10% mana after a full wind chill blast, and that's going to be for my gauntlet. Or you could get the Drought of Withered Essence, which pretty much makes me 5% less of a threat to enemies. So pretty much go for someone else or not hit see you within range as much. You just simply go ahead and add whatever it is you've got and you can start really imbuing and making some really cool tools, weapons and armors. If you still haven't got a lot of these, you can still go ahead and dump a bunch of Azov into it too. Now Azov you only get from quests and filling up the breaches. We click 30% on that. We've now got a chance of getting very high attribute and a chance of getting a very high perk. If we're only using 15 Azov, we've got a low chance of getting a perk, but you're always guaranteed to get at least one attribute. Whereas if you've got no Azov at all, you might not have the chance of getting an attribute. There are some instances where you can get incredibly lucky, but yeah, if you've got the Azov, absolutely use it up to help get some perks. You can see my harvesting yield is giving me 12% more resources, and on my pickaxe, I've got a 34% chance when finishing gathering a node to gain one Azov. Compare that just to the dull, boring iron skin knife I made before I realised I could infuse it, and you get the idea. You'll come across a bunch of different weapons. The game throws so many at you in the first 15 levels. It's basically trying to get you to decide which ones you really want to roll around with and test out. What it doesn't give you is tools. So use the crafting options and make yourself some better tools. All them increasing tools means you're going to be able to unlock and get some of the higher resources much quicker. So even if you don't want necessarily to be a gatherer, make sure you get your upgraded tools. You'd be surprised how much that can give you a boost if you get better weapons and stuff. Whenever you get a chance, also don't forget to upgrade and refine all of your base items. Things like coarse leather, I would say always maybe keep a little handful going just in case you do need more of the base version of it. But otherwise, you want to really upgrade and refine as much as you can. It gives you a ton of XP as well. And it's something that can easily accumulate, not realising when you're just dumping stuff off, doing mission after mission. So every now and then, make sure you've gone and refined as much as possible. And if you're absolutely miles away from a certain level, you might as well go ahead and use up some of them resources. Because it's going to take a while to get to level 50. One thing that can also be neglected quite a bit is the town project board. You do this all together with everyone on the server and in your factions. Go ahead and just unlock every single one. If you've got the coins for it, you see it's a small amount. Completing some of these will give you the XP needed to upgrade forges, upgrade gates, weaponsmiths temperaments, as well as the town upkeep. You can keep track of these by clicking on your journal, obviously, and then town project. So never go around killing creatures unless you really have got something tied to it. I was killing alligators just for the fun of it. And if I'd actually come back here first and made sure I got one of these, I could have earned myself some sweet XP. In fact, some of the missions here are really a lot of XP considering. When you take a look at the main missions, level 12, I only get 390 XP for that one. But the town projects, look how much I get. 1,000, 960, 1,300, 1,300. So yeah, pay attention to these. They can be neglected as well because they're often not close enough to all the rest of the crafting benches. When it comes to resources, you'll often come across bushes, lots of wood, and of course, boulders and flint. Some resources look almost like they're just part of the general bushes. Be on the lookout for some of this. Oh, you son of a bitch. And for poachers that also want to take your resources that you're looking for too. Try not to venture off into foreign lands too early. A lot of your experience boosts and buffs that you manage to get while doing the tutorial missions mean that you'll get more XP for gathering and crafting, finding resources in pretty much your home area. It would seem simple enough that when you go to a different area, if you beat a more creature that's higher than you, you might get a bit more XP. But it doesn't seem to be the case. 
There's no kind of reward for toughing it out against much higher damaged enemies or creatures. One thing to pay particular attention to is bull rushes. This is how you can make potions. Also, don't forget to pick up plenty of fresh water as you'll need that too. And you can even go ahead and just drink water on its own and you will get a small little buff. Briar buds will sometimes be found by the riversides too. Hemp is this purple plant here. So really try and pay attention to the actual landscape and the resources around you and not just expect a big massive hitbox or icon to appear. Particularly for some reason on the harder to get resources, it doesn't appear until you're right on top of it. The bigger the plant, the bigger the tree, the longer it's also going to take to actually harvest that item too. But you will get more from it. There's not much point in showing lots of locations on the map. If you actually take a look at the resource locations, it kind of tells you. Instead of maybe just having icons on a certain area, in fact, you've actually got to take a look at the color and the grayed out little images that are on there instead to give you a general overview of what might be there. In shrubland, you find berries and bushes. Also, it's not the best system. Again, it's asking you to use your actual eyes, but take a look at the resource locations. Instead of actually just pointing out exactly where they are, it is going to require a little bit of practice getting used to the colours and what might be there. You're also not guaranteed to always find the particular berry. You can see cranberries are in, meant to be in the shrublands, but I explored all around this area and I only found blueberries. Some quests will direct you a little bit more towards a certain resource in a certain area, but not as much as you'd think. Lots of these journal notes seem pretty useless, but supposedly every 10 that you find you'll get a bunch of XP for it. So make sure you go and approach everyone, even if it seems like you've already done it, double double check, as it can be another little way to gain some more. Now if you have come across a creature that's maybe just a wee bit too high level for you to take on, don't forget that a lot of them cannot climb mountains, walls or cliffs as well as you can. You'll find often that players are kiting just for the fun of it, but it's a good idea to get super high and then try using for range if you really want to. But sometimes the creatures will kind of get grumpy and then just run off and flee. But don't take the piss too much because they will come after you. You can see it's retreating and it's gained full health again. It basically knows when you're trying to cheese. You'll often find certain resources in pretty dangerous or higher level areas it seems. It's just the way the game has panned it out. A lot of fruits and vegetables, they'll often be near higher placed areas from your starting point. Again, so sorry for explaining the basics, but you'd be surprised how much of this you might be wondering where some of these items are. One thing to do is to make sure you've got a good save point. You can craft items on the fly here too, mainly potions and more tools. Although you can craft certain weapons as well. Also, obviously again, don't forget to rest. It will replenish your health up anytime. If you want to get back to a settlement really super quick and you haven't got enough Azov or you can't actually fast travel, you can do the recall to in. However, when you do this though, it does mean you won't be able to do it again for another hour. And if you do need to get back to where you just were, then what you can do is go ahead, click on the game menu, click respawn, and then choose where you want to go. You will take some damage to all your items in your inventory. That's another reason why you should dump any extra stuff inside your lockup. And you then choose where you want to happen to go to your camp tier 1. So effectively it's a recall point. Now this is important because you do get inundated with loads of quests. And some of them are pretty close to each other. So you end up going on these big long treks where you don't actually return back to a settlement for quite a while. But I feel like you should really, really try and get back to the settlement and turn in quests as soon as they're done. You'll often get better rewards, you'll often get new equipment, new armor, or you may get access to other quests that will also give you more benefits. So try not to hoard all your quests and hand them in all at one time. It is a pain in the ass having to travel across the country with no mounts and such a slow ass speed. But utilizing the return to settlement option or respawn option is definitely going to help you in the long term. Obviously, if you've got an abundance of Azov, you can just fast travel and use it up and it won't be an issue. But I do find that in the early stages, the Azov is more beneficial being used to craft weapons and tools. And just the last flurry of little tips and hints, crafting and skinning is really important. You'll probably get to tracking and skinning level way before you get to any of the other professions like cooking or anything else. 
and you do get a decent buff that pretty much tracks smaller creatures and obviously as you progress through these levels it will get easier and easier to spot where them are. You've got some problems with the early stages trying to find sheep and certain other creatures. I've gone through this in another little video, more of a jokey guide, but it is a thing that they're getting over farmed. So always look at the map location name and explore that area rather than the waypoint when searching for a particular creature. But as I said, as you increase in skinning and hunting, you will gain the ability to see it on your waypoint. You can see I've got the little picture of the hair on my compass. It's not a waypoint, Jay. It's a compass. Fishing wasn't something I've done until literally the last point of my session where it was okay to go and get some fish. You can cook up some new meals, recipes. What you really need is lots of oil. So you're going to have to do quite a bit of this and there's quite a few missions in the early stages teaching you to do fishing. So go ahead and do this early doors again so that you can complete some of the missions a bit quicker. And just like all the other tools, you're going to have to craft your own fishing rod. And you should be able to finally make some use out of all that bait you've got from bushes. When it comes to actual combat, be wary of other players obviously stealing your kills. We know about this with the poachers when you're hunting something. But you can also kind of miss out if you're not getting enough hits on a creature. Pretty much, as far as I can tell, you need to do at least one combo on a creature to gain some XP, even if you don't get the killing blow. Now I say I am nearly there with this because there has been a couple times where I felt like I definitely got a combo in but it still didn't give me enough XP. But in the main, every time I've really focused on at least getting three hits with my sword or parry, I've definitely got some XP. And particularly when I use magic and items, especially if I get two hits on it, I will usually always get a share of the XP. It is frustrating, they surely should have a proper system in place where everyone just gets a percentage of exactly how much damage you did. But I guess this way it does stop players from literally poaching everyone's kills or only hitting one creature once, running away and sharing some of the XP too. I did cover it briefly a bit earlier about XP in terms of like there's no real cheaty way to get XP. In a lot of games you can find that method whether it's crafting 200 daggers or refining something over and over again. But New World seems to have locked it down pretty tight. Basically the story does have a lot of the best XP. I did show you guys that the planning areas or the town planning missions do offer a lot as well. The XP pretty much gets a big amount up to level 7. Then after level 7 it slows down. In fact you need more XP to get each level after that. So if you're wondering why the grind has become so grindy after that level, it's because they have implemented a big longer hook. It wouldn't surprise me if they mess around with the XP values again before the full game comes out, as they've done this twice already in the last couple months, judging by their patch notes. But as I said, it really is a bit frustrating that you go against a lot of harder enemies and you don't seemingly get much bigger reward for it. Also, PvP looks like it's pretty unsatisfying at the moment. Yes, you get a 5% extra roving bonus of XP, which is not to be sniffed at, but the amount of times you're going to be killed or hurried in the first early stages by other players, it really becomes a chore and really hinders you and just makes you running around the map having to respawn over and over again. You do get some XP for killing other players. Um, I literally only took part in it once, hence why I'm not even showing it here, and it just it doesn't seem correctly installed yet. Yeah, like I don't see enough proper bonuses for having PvP turned on. And I'll lastly finish off with some of your faction gear. Now factions do offer some good missions that can give you XP, but the rewards for getting some of this stuff are even better. The tokens themselves aren't exactly set in the world of light until you get to level 15 because you can't use any of the weapons or armor pieces until you're at that level. So this all might look nice and fabulous, but until you get to level 15, you might as well just save your tokens. With just a few exceptions, there are a few sort of seals or little sort of tokens that I think you can maybe equip these to items a little bit lower level. I wouldn't waste your money on particular arrows or cartridges and stuff like that. You should find plenty of that if you're killing lots of enemies or looting lots of chests. But certainly take a good look at some of these emblems and stuff and see what they do. Also, don't bother buying an iron chisel just yet. I do believe you can't take part in the actual event until you're like level 25. Obviously you can respec at any time during the beta, I don't know if that's going to be the same thing, but 
pay attention to your classes. I won't go too deep on this. I still think it's just for you to experiment and try. There is no real best class as far as I can tell, other than saying that magic does seem a little bit underpowered at the beginning, but this is pretty standard for most games where using things like a staff or uh, fireballs or whatever magic it is, it's always a bit underpowered until you start unlocking more, the more advanced spells and then it becomes a little bit overpowered. And New World does seem to be the same sort of situation. The rapier is fine, lots of abilities will have pretty much a area of effect damage type um, they can be good but I do find the creatures AI is pretty nimble sometimes and I was missing quite a lot with my shots I wouldn't waste your resources on making or doing certain guns until you've got enough of the imbuing stuff to really make it special so like the tokens or having enough Azov to give it some perks as I said you should get plenty of weapons just by completing the missions and the tasks and there we go, that is pretty much my little tips guide up to level 12. I know it's only beginner stages, but that is my first, I would say, six hours in the game proper. Give or take a bit of queue time, waiting around to jump in or a few disconnects, etc. And yeah, New World's got promise. Hopefully I can give you some more detailed guides about class builds when I start learning more about them and showing you really the depths of crafting. If you found it useful at all, do leave me a like and hopefully we'll be back for less obvious stuff in the future. Until next time, rat bags, laters. Oh, by the way, if you want to join my class, my clan, I'll remind you again, come and join my Discord and we'll sort you out our name.